ultimately on some level, the constraint to what they do is dependent upon their budget, right? However, what I generally tell prospects is, there's a couple of ways I go about this. If you die tomorrow, what would your loved ones do? Would they cremate your barrier? Because sometimes there's, in the market that we serve, there's a belief that they don't care cremation. This is more when they say, I don't really care. Um, and if they say that, then I'll say, what are your kids, what would your kids do? Given they had the money, what would they do? Oh, they bury me. You hear that more often than not in my experience. Um, the idea of burning up your mom or dad for some parents in their minds is like, ah, probably wouldn't be okay with them. So they maybe see burials being an option, but either way, if they're undecided, generally speaking, what I will tell them is, Hey, look, at the end of the day, here's the pricing on cremations, four to 5,000. Here's the price on burial, 10 to 12. Inflation is going to double that in 20 years. My recommendation is to get the most you can and try to buy enough for a burial if you can, because at the end of the day, if you don't get a burial and you just cremate yourself, well, that's extra money. Maybe there's other bills you got to pay off. Maybe you just leave some behind so your kids can have a nice party, you know, to uh, show your, show their respects. Right? So long story short, uh, I try to shoot high. I try to say, Hey, let's just get enough in case you get buried. Right. Um, but under, understanding at the end of the day, it still will be constricted by the budget. What you don't want to do. And this is the, this is the bigger thing you don't want to do is not try to resolve this issue. This is in a sense, a potential for an objection. Let, let me ask you guys a question. Should you wait to decide on buying life insurance when you're unsure of having a cremation or burial? I don't care which way they go. They need life insurance either way, right? That ain't changing the reality of things, right? What solves the problem here is buying a policy. Now, how big or small the problem is, we want to try to define so they can feel better about making a decision, but we don't want to make it their decision contingent on buying because the problem's still the problem, right? They still don't have money to cover their final expenses. Get them covered, then they can figure out whatever they want to later. So that's why we do this. And that's the big picture here, okay? So let's say, let's say they say, oh, you want to be buried or cream it? Ah, just toss me in the ditch. That's what we hear down here in the South a lot. Just toss, toss me in the ditch. So is, is, first of all, is this a real objection? Sometimes it's comical. You know, people are just clowning, right? But um, they really don't care. Uh, on some level, they don't care, but they do. You know, they don't want to, they know at the end of the day, yeah, that's not really going to happen. You can't get buried in your backyard. You know, there's some ordinances against that. <laughs> And um, they're going to have to get a plan. So I usually laugh at it and I say, yeah, if, if that's if we could, we would, wouldn't we? But truly, you know how it is. You got to have something. So do you want to be buried or cream? I kind of go back to it, but it's usually light. Um, if somebody says, um, oh, I don't have to worry about this. The my kids will take care of it. They're well off as a millionaire today ain't a millionaire tomorrow. It's it's different making money than keeping it. OK. And I'm not saying this to brag. I'm not, I'm, I'm saying this because this is something you need to talk to your prospects about the state of financial affairs. Your kids are in today. Aren't the same as they are tomorrow. And that's just a reality of it. And the thing is they may live another 10, 20, 30 years and people go through ups and downs professionally and personally and financially in their lives. And the question is, is what if, what if, Let's, I, I, let's, just, let's, just, you know, they're, they're in great shape financially. I'll give you that. But what if they're not? And, and, and life has a way of throwing curveballs <laughs> at the least expected time. Doesn't it make sense to have something just in case what we hope will happen that just, you know, truly over time change? And I'm sure many of you know people who are very well off that weren't or, we're very well off, divorced, by by money, right? So um, I will, I won't say this exact story I told you, but I'll say, yeah, that's, I'll say something along those lines. Well, that's true if you die today, but I'm sure you've lived long enough where people, you knew people who were in great financial shape and then things happen, you know? And um, what if they lose money and, and 
you're expecting them to pay for you still? What if they're in financial straits themselves? What if they're worse off than you? Doesn't it make more sense to be prepared? So just make sure you at least challenge that objection. Um, doesn't mean that they'll come around, but don't let it stand for that idea that, oh, it's somebody else's responsibility. Appeal to their sense of self-responsibility and, and truly think about, you know, is this something that, um, uh, give them something to think about if things change.